Hey, it is me, Steve, and I'm going to talk a little more about vertical uh, exaggerations and how that applies to geology. Um, you know, I kind of touched why we, you know, on why we vertically exaggerate things in the uh, last video I did, but here I'm going to show you just how a vertical exaggeration, how you got to be careful when you see it. All right, Th this cross section is just one I made up. Um, it doesn't, it's not anything in reality. As you can see, there is a fault present. That's what that big thick black line in the middle is, and you see an up and a down. Now, this vertical exaggeration here, um, the fault looks, it, you can tell it's a reverse fault, but it looks like a high angle fault. Well, the vertical exaggeration here is 40 times, and I'm going to compress it down to what it actually is here, so you can see that that fault isn't actually at at that such a high angle but the vertical exaggeration makes it look like it is all right so this is 40 times vertical exaggeration all right that means one horizontal unit is equal to one unit on the ground there's I'm not putting feet or meters or anything here but that that's what that means all right that means one vertical unit on the uh, left there is equal to 40 units on the ground all right that's what vertical exaggeration means and there's and there's other ways to express this. I, I did vertical exaggeration equals 40x, but I'll get into that when I show you the actual real-world uh, application I'm going to show you. All right, so our fault here has an apparent dip of 77 degrees. That's, you know, 13 degrees within vertical. It looks like it's a high-angle reverse fault. Well, let's start shrinking it. Here, vertical exaggeration is equal to 20 times. Um, the 40 times vertical exaggeration would have been way overkill in any geologic cross section, but I'm trying to illustrate a point here. Um, that vertical exaggeration 20 times is still kind of steep. We can still see a lot of the units very clearly, and we're not going to gain any new information by even at 20 times. 10 times here vertical exaggeration, so we're shrinking it some more. Now our uh, vertical drop, instead of being 40 times as great is now only uh, 10 times as great as the uh, horizontal. So as you, as you can see here, our uh, fault, it's getting lower in angle, all right? And this cross-section would probably have been okay to do. Uh, you can still see, I mean, most of the geologic uh, units, you know, the colored units here are plain as day still. You can still see them. Okay, here's vertical exaggeration five times. If I was personally making this cross-section, based on the information I have and what I know, this is probably the scale I would have picked. Now our vertical fault is still exaggerated, but you can still see the units and you can start to see that that high angle reverse fault is actually a thrust fault, all right? Here's no vertical exaggeration. Now, as you can see, in this case, vertical exaggeration was necessary uh, because you can't really see anything here. That fault, you can barely see it there. But I'm going to highlight it here for you. That's where it is. So this is no vertical exaggeration. That means one horizontal unit is equal to one vertical unit. All right. And our fault is clearly a thrust fault here. All right. Now, at no vertical exaggeration, in reality, our fault has an actual dip of only seven degrees. All right. So you got to think about when you do vertical exaggerations and cross section, what's really practical? I mean, am I going to exaggerate way too much where I don't need to? I'm not going to get any new information and I'm just going to start confusing things? Or am, can I just expand it enough so you can see detail in geologic units and still understand that that fault is a reverse or is a thrust fault and not just a high angle reverse fault? All right. So... What I'm going to do now is I am going to get into an actual geologic map that I did here and walk it through you and explain why I picked vertical exaggerations I did. Okay, what we have here is an actual geologic map I did in northwestern Illinois here. This is the title of that geologic map. I did it back in 2014. Northwestern Illinois is being neglected uh, by the state survey uh, for many, many reasons. It's not intentional. It's just, uh, so I just, basically in a nutshell, I decided to take it on in like 2014. As of yet, this is the only map I've produced. On the right here, you can see that this is a geologic map shrunk down. So this, this is a map view, all right? Now, you know, uh, we can get cross sections from this map view. And as you can kind of see the lines kind of crisscrossing it, one from the upper right to lower left, and one from the up, upper left to mid right. Um, so we can generate cross sections from these using the topography. This is the location of where this is, this quadrangle. It's a seven and a half minute quadrangle is in northwestern Illinois. It is in Joe Davies County. 
And you can find this map in its entirety for free on my uh, website here. Uh, there it is right there. All right, so I picked the cross-section A to A prime in this, all right? And you can see here there's a lot of vertical exaggeration, and it looks like a lot of vertical exaggeration. But this is only vertically exaggerated 10 times, and I'm going to explain why I did that. But here, just so you can look, um, here are the geologic units that appear in that cross-section. Um, not all of them appear in that cross-section. The Silurian isn't exposed in this part. It's, it's been eroded, but it's in other parts of the map. Uh, so basically here what we have is we have three geologic ex uh, uh, systems exposed in this cross-section that that, from A to A prime. Uh, we have the Cambrian, the Ordovician, and the Quaternary, and I've separated them here by thick red lines just so you can see. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a little more detail. On the left, what we have is our feet above mean sea level. Uh, and like I said, on the bottom it says vertical exaggeration 10 times. And there's another way to write it. Like I mentioned uh, before earlier, you can also write it as a ratio. Exaggeration is 10 to 1. I never do this. I just write vertical exaggeration equals like 10x or 20x or whatever I'm trying to do. And the reason why I do that is because if you just say vertical exaggeration is equal to 10 times, that implies automatically the horizontal scale has not changed. Um, uh, but you could write it. Uh, I've never run across a geologic map where the horizontal scale has been exaggerated along with the vertical scale. I've never seen that happen. Um, but you, I mean, either way is fine. You can just write as it is in red there. Exaggeration is 10 to 1, and there's nothing wrong with that. But my vertical, like I said, my vertical exaggeration is 10 times. And if you look here, what's that mean? Well, that means, in this case, that red horizontal bar is equal to 2,000 feet on the ground. The yellow vertical bar is equal to 200 feet on the ground, as you can see by the, the bar scale in black letters there on the left. You divide 2,000, or you divide... Uh, uh, 200 into 2,000, and you get 20, or you get 10, sorry. <laughs> you get, so that's where your vertical exaggeration comes from. 2,000 divided by 200, in this case, equals 10, all right? So I'm going to start shrinking it here for you. So now I've shrunk it down to 5x. Now I picked 10x for a reason, and five vertical exaggeration 5x here seems like you may still be able to see things here, but if you look to the left, I'm going, I, I sat here and I kept the, uh, because it's starting to get squashed. So I put the 1,500 feet above mean sea level there for you, just for reference. But this still wasn't enough resolution for, my, for me, because a lot of the uh, Paleozoic units in Illinois are the formations and members. I wanted to show as many formations and members as I could, and even though they may be thick in one area, in this map area, they may be really thin. And I wanted to show, you see that kind of red unit in the middle, uh, I think it's the OSR, yeah, that, it's discontinuous, there's actually an unconformity there, um, but I wanted to show that in good detail, and that five times it's still not enough, because it is partially eroded, the OSP right above it, that light tan, almost white, that's the St. Peter sandstone, and I just wanted, I thought five times wasn't enough, because you can see here, that other units are starting to look really thin, all right? So that's why I used the 10x. I wanted to really show that bedrock valley in the middle of the map there, all right? So here we shrink it down to 2x, all right? And as you can see, that valley looks a lot wider than it does, uh, than it is tall, and that's because we're getting close to the one-to-one -one ratio here. And as you can see at 2x, you can't really see anything. Um, I, I I needed to show more resolution. I wanted to show because the main reason why I wanted to show as many geologic units as I could is because this is essentially an area of Cambrian sandstones, Ordovician uh, limestones overlain by Ordovician sandstones, overlain by Ordovician limestones, overlain by Ordovician shale. And the reason for me wanting to show as much as I could is so you can see where the potential aquifers would be as opposed to the aquitards. So this was for groundwater resource purposes mainly. And here it is at no vertical exaggeration. You can't really see anything here. At this scale, really the only thing I'd have been able to divide out it here is the Cambrian, the lower, the Cambrian, which is mostly sandstone here. There's a couple limestone units. Um, 
the lower Ordovician, which is almost all carbonate rock, dolo stones, the middle and upper Ordovician, which is a mix of sandstone at the bottom, which is the St. Peter and that red unit, and then the overlying Galena Platteville, which is all carbonate rock. So it wouldn't have shown what I wanted it to show if, at all at this scale. And then the overlying quaternary I could have shown. So no vertical exaggeration wasn't an option. So in this case, I picked a 10 and I explained why. So you, I just wanted to show you here how you can use, how, you, how vertical exaggeration is useful and how to pick your vertical, your, your, your exaggeration scale. But anyway, that is pretty much it. And I hope you learned something.